What's, What's happening, happening fandoms? fandoms? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we react to music videos and shows. Today we're going back to new rock stars where Eric Voss is going to break down Ahsoka episode three. We got so many amazing details in the first two episodes. Yes. Uh, hyperspace whales and sisters of the death of mirror. I don't know. All kinds of crazy information. I can't wait to see what we get from this one. Here Let's we go. go. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of Star Wars Ahsoka Episode 3, Time to Fly. Balin Skull saw a few purgle in the clouds of Cetos in Episode 2, and sure enough, they are back to really apologize. We're sorry for taking your friend. Oh, please don't look at it. No more whale speak in this video, I promise. Let's break down this episode scene by scene for yeah. all the Star Wars Easter eggs and details you missed. Okay, we see the same opening metallic faces and how Helmets as yep, last week, we Vader, sure did. PO, Clone Trooper Helmet, HK Assassin Droid, the Inquisitor, Maroc, Hu Yang, Stormtrooper, Chopper, and Sabine's Helmet. So quick note on Maroc before we begin. I did not address this before because I think it's a very silly theory, but no, I do not think Maroc is Ezra Bridger. Are you kidding me? Ezra would have had to come back from this other galaxy and regardless of his dark side mm. temptations, our man would never have broke bad and become a freaking Inquisitor. Come on, have we learned nothing from Rebels? By the way, if you haven't seen all of Rebels and don't have time to watch all those episodes or you just want a refresher we made an excellent four-part rebels recap series to catch you all up we're gonna on all watch the episodes them. the characters the easter eggs and the bits of lore that you need to know please watch those and share those with all the others out there who are like i don't know how to get into this series now when it comes to moreau we did see sam Whitworth's name in the additional voices mm. of the credits of episodes one and two leading some to believe that moreau could be star killer but moreau's performance has been done by stunt actor paul darnell we also saw his name in the credits of episode two and Sam Witwer is just one of these regular Lucasfilm dudes who voices one-off characters like that short trooper and Andor. He could have voiced any of those droids or helmeted figures. Yeah. But notice how his name also appears besides names like Matthew Wood, the sound editor who has voiced General Grievous and Bib Fortuna. Huh. So who knows? We may just get a number of voices that echo through the past in a future episode and the sound team blanket credited all the voice actors who helped out on the season. But in this episode, Maroc actually speaks. <laughs> Yeah, now, I gotta admit, the voice does sound a bit like Sam Witwer to me, but Sam is also just a very good voice actor whose voice is just kind of like the taste of chicken. Everything sounds like it. But the most important detail is <laughs> okay. that in the credits of this episode, the role of Murak is fully credited to Paul Darnell, mm. which is a big upgrade from him just being credited for stunts last week. Now, Witwer's name does once again appear at the very end of the credits with the additional voices section, just as it has appeared in episode one and two. So I just don't know if they would have credited Murak entirely to Paul Darnell if Whitwer had been voicing yeah, him. Like he bumped up Darnell's credit in an episode in which the character speaks. That's a big deal. Episode credits are contractually required to be accurate. And I know some of you may say, well, there was that episode of Rebels, season four, episode 11, where Dave Filoni credited the Loath Wolf Doom to the Force. But folks, that was animation. <laughs> Live action episode credits are taken very seriously. <clears throat> so all of this is really to say, I don't know, we're three out of eight episodes in, and I think Maroc is just gonna be Maroc. Okay, the episode opens with mm. Ahsoka's T6 in hyperspace. When we saw hyperspace looking like this in the Mandalorian season three, episode one, right. we Ogu saw a whale yes. floating past them. And yes, this is a very big purgle episode. Who then trains with Sabine using a bakken, which is a Japanese wooden sword used for training in Kinjutsu. Who Yang says, these are form positions. They are numbered similar to the Mandoa numbers that the armorer shouted at Din Djarin while training him with a Darksaber in the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 5. <laughs> and of course, we are reminded of Sabine training with the Darksaber with Ezra and Kanan in Rebel Season 3, Episode 15, Trials of the Darksaber. One, two, three, four, five, six. These were the basics originally taught to Sabine by Ezra in that episode, and Sabine made a bit of progress with the Darksaber. It started to feel lighter in her hands, but she later handed it off to Bo-Katan at the beginning of Rebel Season 4. Ooh. So other than that period and whatever Ahsoka taught her in the in-between years, yeah. Sabine is still very much a novice. Here, he Hu Yang, the was Jedi looking Order's good with that dark saber. and expert on lightsabers, uses these four hollow sabers, looking a bit like General Grievous, four-dogging it like that, but yeah. these are to record the vector and the accuracy of Sabine's swings. Light yellow for more accurate it orange for off target and more askew angles. Ahsoka proposes. How about Zatochi? 
This is a reference to Zatoichi, the blind swordsman, the recurring character in 25 Japanese samurai films from 1962 to 1973. George Lucas cited the Hidden Fortress and the Seven Samurai as inspirations for Star Wars. This technique involves Sabine wearing this blindfold mask, similar to the ones worn by Padawans in the Jedi mm. Temple that we saw or in Attack by of the Luke. And the makeshift one yeah. that Obi-Wan had Luke wear on the Falcon in A New Hope, but this mask is an interesting symbol on it. Kind of reminds me of something that they might have had in the Jedi Temple training room that we saw in flashbacks and Rebel Season 2, Episode 18, Shroud of Darkness, when the future Grand Inquisitor wore masks, but those had eye holes in it. A similar mask that Kanan Jarrus put on after he was blinded in the Season 2 finale of Rebels in that Malachor mm. Sith Temple. Thrawn did keep one of these Jedi Temple masks on his desk in Season 3 and 4. This blindfold mask might also be mm. based on the Kendo mask, which is used in Japanese swords martial arts, but I just find it interesting that Ahsoka keeps this whole training set on her ship, with yeah. lightsaber yeah. training instruments recovered or rebuilt with Hu Yang to keep mm. this art form alive. Very Even interesting. She's uninterested in the Jedi Order, like she may have rigged her table and seats to descend to the floor to give her more room for activities. Ahsoka tells Sabine, I want you to see with more than just your eyes. Yes, this is the kind of thing Kanan Jarrett's had to learn after he was blinded by Maul at the end of season two of Rebels, how to see with more than just your eyes. While Sabine is blindfolded, they do this awesome camera editing trick. Do you know where I am? Next to mm -hmm. Yang. Are you sure? Very funny. I love it. We don't see Ahsoka walk to Sabine's right side and the sound mix edits Rosario Dawson's voice to be closer and on the right side of the stereo mix at first, but then shifts to be on the left side of the stereo mix when she cool. suddenly appears on the left side of frame. We experience the same subjective confusion that Sabine does. The camera stays on Sabine alone in frame for a few seconds and then... Yes, since Sabine cannot see where Ahsoka is, neither can we. Sabine yeah. swims right. in more air than the lightsaber kid, but there is <laughs> one moment she makes progress. <laughs> Yeah, the end. toward the yeah, end of her first. She did use a bit of the force there to sense the Bakken behind her, but then she just gets too greedy with a kill lunge for getting her footing so Ahsoka can trip her. So it's not Sabine's lack of force sensitivity, though she is definitely number to the force than the Jedi are. It's really Sabine's impatience. Ahsoka says, Anger and frustration are quick to give power but they also unbalance you. Yeah, Ahsoka means that literally and metaphorically, as fear is the path of the dark side, you know, leads to anger, hate, suffering, etc. But the force is really the balance between them. Onto the New Republic fleet, we see four blue painted A-wings flying in formation past home one, that is Admiral Akbar's nice. Mon Calamari flagship from Return of the Jedi. We see some CR-90 Corvettes, those are the ones with the Corvettes. 11 engines like the Tantive Four had, mm. and the Hammerhead Corvette. We saw these in Rogue One. The planet they orbit has a vast cityscape surface, could be Coruscant, but currently, the New Republic's capital is Chandrilla. That's Mon Mothma's homeworld. The capital okay. currently rotates among the core worlds. In the future, it's going to be Hosnian Prime. That's the system that gets destroyed by Starkiller Base in The Force Awakens. Chandrilla Ooh. has more green land and oceans. It's not completely an urban cityscape. So I'm assuming it's either Coruscant or Hosnian Prime. Probably Coruscant. Hera checks in with First Officer Vic Hawkins. She's waiting. There are several senators with her. One of them is Ziono. Not Ziono! Senator Hamato Ziono is, I think, the first major detail to be pulled in live action from the Star Wars Resistance animated series. He's the father to Kazuda Ziono, okay. pilot of the Resistance. They hail from Hosnian Prime, and Papa Ziono stubbornly refuses to accept Kazuda joining the Resistance, considering them extremists. Boo! Inside this room, which again <laughs> seems to be the auditorium style room that we saw Mon Mothma give everyone the briefing about the Bothans and Return of the Jedi, Hera greets mm. Chancellor Mon Mothma, Genevieve O'Reilly, returning from Andor, now yeah. elected the first Chancellor after the fall of the Empire. With her is Senator Ziono, Senator Rodrigo, Senator Marwood, and a Senator of the Grand Race. Now, there was a Grand Senator named Ask Ak, who was a Palpatine loyalist during the prequel era, but nah, I don't think he'd be in the New Republic government this high up, but who knows? Apparently, a loyalty oath with your fingers crossed behind your back is enough to get the top job with space exactly. Nazi destroyers unsupervised. Mon Mothma asks, Hera, you look well. How's young Jason? Fine, Chancellor. In fact, he's on board. Somewhere. <laughs> causing trouble with Chopper, no doubt. Yes, they're referring to Jason Sandula, Hera's son with Kane and Jarrus, revealed in the final minutes of the Rebels finale episode. He's played in this episode by Evan Witten. Dave mm. Filoni has said that Jason's name, J-A-C-E-N, is a tribute to the Legends character, Jason Solo, the son of Han and Leia, who oh. eventually becomes a Sith Lord, Darth Hadeus. Yeah, don't name your kid Jason. Senator Rodrigo <laughs> says the Imperial loyalists on Corellia are outliers since ex-imps had to take these oaths of loyalty. And it's kind of hard to see here if she's just naive 
Steve or actively pro Empire, but with Rodrigo and Ziono and that shifty looking grand senator, like notice how he nods when Ziono shuts down Hera's task force request. That would be either three to two or four to one on any vote they had about this. Yeah. Take away Kent. I've said it before and I'll say it again. <laughs> Democracy simply doesn't work. Hera alludes to Thrawn's allies working on a way to find him. In addition to Morgan Elspeth, we know of the Shadow Council in The Mandalorian Season 3, including Captain Pelion, that was Thrawn's right-hand man in the Timothy Zahn novels Ooh. and currently played by Xander Berkeley in live action. Saw him in The Mandalorian Chapter 23. Yeah, right. that was great. remembers Thrawn for how effective he was against Hera's Phoenix Squadron over Lothal in the final season of Rebels, which led to Hera crashing the next swing on Lothal, getting captured, tortured, and Kanan's death while rescuing her. Hera calls out Ziono, though. Were you ever in the war, Senator? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was harsh. Sat back and waited to see who came out on top. Damn! So Hera currently <laughs> represents the views of Senator Leia Organa, whom Claudia Gray's Bloodline novel explores during these years as a Republic leader ousted by New Republic political corruption and leaves to form the Resistance. Hera's defiance to Ziono here may later make Kazuda joining the Resistance feel personal. Now, real quick. Thrawn is not your typical Imperial officer. Yeah. I know because I fought against him. He killed friends, people who were like family to me. Now, it is worth noting that Thrawn doesn't really kill many major characters in Rebels. Like, Kanan died because Governor Price blasted the fuel depot, a decision that Thrawn actually hated because it slowed down the production of his TIE Defenders. But his decisions absolutely killed a lot of people. Many Phoenix Squadron pilots, Rebel fighters, innocent Lothal residents. He shot Bendu. Just kidding, Bendu didn't die. He <laughs> faded away laughing. So we are learning here how attached Hera was to all these victims. Jason asks, Is it true, Lance B? He's gonna be a Jedi? Yeah. Where did you hear that? Chopper told me. Yeah. 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 I love Chopper's utterances, and I don't know if this was a growl or an awkward, uh, but remember, Chopper <laughs> was the one Ezra handed his lightsaber off to. He's the one who tossed Sabine that lightsaber in the Rebels mm -hmm. finale episode. He wants this transition to happen. And also, Hera, Chopper's not the best babysitter. He's going to teach Jason how to be a war criminal. Now, Jason, of course, <laughs> then This asks, whole war criminal thing. Try? Yeah, I know you do, Jason. Yeah, she is looking in his eyes and totally seeing Kane and Jairus and likely doesn't want Jason to follow down that path because, you know, it leads people to, like, hop on top of fuel cells and hold back flames to save the people that you love. <laughs> but also, watch that Rebel Season 4 breakdown because there is some unresolved history with Caleb Doom when he was brought to Lothal. It looks like based off of those cave paintings by Yoda, Kiati Mundi, and Mace Windu. And Jason is totally inheriting that what? Okay, so back on the T6, mm. Sabine says... I was hoping that the urgency of our situation Yeah, you can't rush it. Expedite my training a bit. Jedi like Anakin and Ahsoka were in a hurry to get better with the Force during the Clone Wars and for Anakin to go back and save his mom, which really is the worst time to hone this kind of training because you take it harder when you don't pick it up fast enough. You're worried that every failure and setback is causing pain and hurt somewhere around the galaxy. Peacetime is the best time to become a good Jedi. Sabine says that she can't use the Force and Ahsoka counters. The Force resides in all living things. Even you? Yes, in mm. Rebels Trial of the Darksaber, Kanan says essentially the same thing about Sabine to Hera. The Force resides in all living things, but you have to be open to it. Sabine is blocked. Her mind is conflicted. She's so expressive and yet so tightly wound. She's so... Mandalorian. Which is a much nicer way of putting it than what Hu Yang has been dropping this episode. Yeah, no Maybe, kidding. Uh, you, you suck. Hu Yang even <laughs> continues to talk shit. The Jedi Order would not have accepted her. She is not an acceptable candidate. By their standards. Standards which were proven over a millennia. And failed. Ooh, shots oh, fired yeah. from Ahsoka. Ahsoka is expressing her parting ways with the Jedi Order during Clone Wars Season 5, and yes, the Jedi Order's obvious failure when Anakin betrayed them and led the Purge. Ahsoka may also be stung all the way back from the Clone Wars movie when Anakin told her when they first met, You never would have made it as Obi-Wan's Padawan but you might make it as mine. Hu Yang says, mm. You realize, historically, there have been very few Mandalorians who ever became a Jedi. Well, one who did yeah. was named Tar Vizsla, the first wielder of the Darksaber, and since Sabine hails from House Vizsla, technically she is his descendant. Like, maybe mm. she's like 164th Tar. Hu Yang also says, well. I suppose you do come from a long line of non-traditional Jedi. Yeah, he's referring to the chain of masters that Ahsoka comes from. Her master was Anakin, his master was Obi-Wan Kenobi, his master was Qui-Gon Jinn, right, yeah. his master was Dooku, and his master was Yoda. So all of them mm, so exceptions confusing. to the norm. Yeah, so very just weird. That we have all tried to do before when you're eating breakfast alone and you try to force someone a cup across the table. And I love how she initially squints with one eye aiming like a blaster. Her background, of course, is in weaponry, but she exhales 
falls and she refocuses, keeping both eyes open to the living force. We learn all the comms and the Denob system are being jammed, cutting off Hera's bad news, and Hu Yang drops him out of hyperspace far from Cetos following standard Jedi mission protocol, which was referenced back in Ahsoka episode one. Yeah. Hu Yang says, standard. The was in orbit on the far side of the planet. However, there also seems to be a second object, something yes. much larger. Yeah, we get an ominous look at the planet of Cetos, and we can't help but recall the Falcon crew arriving to the Alderaan to be able to see any moon that ended up seen, the Death I seen Star. that one. No moon. It's a space station. Six pilots led by Shin and Murak pursue them in these awesome looking fighters with hmm. weathered red and yellow paint and a buzzing World War II style design. Based on how beat up they look, I'm gonna assume that these ships come from the Clone Wars era. Maybe modified Belulab 22s, originally from the Republic Commando game and later came back in Revenge of the Sith and Clone Wars as Separatist fighters. The yeah. hole on the nose though reminds me of the MiG-15, which was a mm. Soviet designed fighter jet used in the Korean War. It's also kind of reminiscent of the P-47 Mustang with the rounded cowlings and the nose of the F2F Brewster Buffalo. Whatever, it just looks old and scrappy. It yeah. sounds awesome. The rapid rate of blaster fire is sick. A lot of fun watching these, even if Ahsoka's T6 should have been obliterated several times. Just right. the dogfight in here is great. Because George Lucas originally based his aerial combat imagery for the first Star Wars film on actual World War II air battle footage. Hmm. So it's always been part of the franchise's DNA. That's Sabine cool. Complains. I see you got rid of my presets. I never needed them. Yeah, Ahsoka claims to not need computers to aim because she can use a force. Kind of sounds like these two gotten a lot of shit in their time after the yeah, Rebels. Yeah, no kidding. some flashbacks to that. So after Ahsoka tried to train Sabine to learn to anticipate and before rejecting urgency as a way to improve one's skills, now Ahsoka gives in and she adapts. Sabine. Tell me what you need. This teamwork between the pilot and the gunner is just what makes this all so fun. Hera yeah. and Chopper did it in that cool move in episode two. Ray and Finn did it with the Falcon in The Force Awakens. And hey, we do it every time we ride Smuggler's Run. Hey, you can keep <laughs> pilot and gunner. I like the engineer. I like pushing the buttons when they light up. Ahsoka uses the <laughs> okay. unique function of the T6. It's rotating wings to surprise the two pilots with a game of chicken. Going vertical at the last second, That's catching cool. them off guard so Sabine can take one of them out and give herself yeah. some confidence. Her exaltation may remind you of Luke's yeah. I got one from A New Hope. I got him! Great kid. Don't get cocky. Don't but get whereas Han cocky. Solo responded to him with nice work, kid, but don't get cocky, Ahsoka just gives Sabine a very wholesome good work and forgives her when she misses one. Now, from the Eye of Scion, Morgan Elspeth fires turbo lasers. Hu Yang says, See if you can get a little closer. Are you crosswired? Closer, please. I don't know if it's just me, but David Tennant's tone here as Hu Yang totally reminds me of Hannibal Lecter's line to Clarice in Silence of the Lambs. Closer, please. Closer. Like Sabine pushing in with that explosive HK droid head in episode Ooh. two, Hu Yang pushes it here. Just a moment. Scan complete. <laughs> Boom. Now Shin radios to yeah. Morgan. Congratulations. You almost got them. I have eyes on them. Like the high res Dark Sister hollow projections on the Eye of Sion yeah. at the end of episode two, now even the audio communication has a smoother fidelity. Like the hardware Morgan is using on the ship might have been designed transmitted to her from Thrawn's new galaxy or his old galaxy. Mm. I'm reminded mm. of the alien technology transmitted to Earth in the movie Contact, which were blueprints for creating a ring based transportation mm. device to take us through a wormhole mm. back to them. The tech that Thrawn and his forces use could be based on some long forgotten but superior technology of the Rakatan Builders, or the Celestial Gods of Mortis, or whoever oh. it's gonna end up being. Also, I gotta point this out, the shots of Shin Hati in her cockpit, she wears the comms headpiece so that the band goes under her bangs, because she will not mess up her do for this. And yes, it's the same kind of headset that Anakin wears in the Battle of Coruscant during this fun moment. This is where the fun begins. Meanwhile, the headset that Sabine wears looks like the wiry one that Han Solo wears when he was in the Falcon Gunner seat yeah. in the Pope. Now, craziest moment of this episode. Ahsoka yeah, no kidding. in this fly spacesuit. No. Yes headgear that perfectly fits her Laku. And yes, I do not understand the gravity of her walking out on the wing like that, but when she leaps, why the jump would form an arc and not kick yeah. her out directly off into space according to Newton's third law. But you know what? There is no Newton in Star Wars, folks. There shouldn't even be sound in space. None yeah. of this has ever adhered to the laws of physics, but there might be like uh, magnetic clips in her boots. Now on her Perhaps. second flip jump, Ahsoka uses her lightsaber to mm -hmm. sever the fighter's wing, reminding us of Rey's big flip move in the Rise of Skywalker uh, on Pisano when she used 
your lightsaber to wreck Kylo Ren's mm. TIE Interceptor. Now, this just causes Ahsoka to float loose. But if you look closely, some sparks fly off her back tech. So this may have been some kind of jetpack thruster, maybe a localized gravity regulator. I don't know. I'm doing my best here, folks. Sabine uh. ends up using the same rotating wing mechanism that Ahsoka used before now to rake Ahsoka back into the hatch. Now, yeah, again, and, and then she has grab boots or something. Skies over CTOS last episode. And now Sabine and Ahsoka see him up close. Tons of them. Tons of purgle. They're awesome. They look so good. The mm -hmm. closed captions on Disney Plus actually describe this sound as melodic rumbling. It is a huge deal for Sabine to see these. The Purgle mm. were, of course, the hyperspace whales that Ezra summoned in the, in the final episode of Rebels to defeat Thrawn, fulfilling Bendu's prophecy to Thrawn in the season three finale that Thrawn would be defeated with many arms surrounding oh. him in a cold embrace. And those whales zipped both of them off into hyperspace. Mm. The Purgle were first introduced in Rebels season two, episode 15, The Call, when the ghost crew came across an asteroid destroyed gas refinery where Purgle feed on that gas to survive. Ezra made a connection with the Alpha Purgle by looking into its eye, forming this lifelong connection that he would call upon oh. in his hour of need in the series finale. I wonder if the clouds of Cetos might be composed of a similar gaseous substance as what was in that planetoid structure in the call episode. Now, that would make sense episode, why they would be there. In the series, Sabine has actually added a Purgle to the pauldron of her armor, so she has been dreaming of this moment. Purgle mm. do actually show up in the constellations of the closing credits, mm. along with a single Loth Wolf by the planet Lothal. I actually translated every single rune, planet, and hidden clue on that star map in another video. Definitely watch it. It's extremely important to know what the series is really doing. And with Dave Filoni so obsessed with wolf imagery, the character name of Merak is based on Arthurian legend, a character associated with wolves. Filoni's X-Wing pilot character is named Trapper Wolf. Everything about the <laughs> Loth Wolves that you can learn by watching that Rebels 4 recap video. It's just worth reminding everyone that wolves and whales share a common evolutionary ancestry. As the reason whales are mammals and not fish is that they had a common mammalian ancestor that lived close to water really? and eventually evolved into a whale. Now, while in the Rebels finale, there was a mix of big purgle and smaller ones, here there only seem to be big ones. Have they <clears throat> grown? Sabine pilots right by the big purgle's eye. Yeah. So it is also important in this moment that Sabine is piloting, not Ahsoka. It's Sabine's time to fly. I haven't seen those creatures since the day Ezra disappeared. And I wonder if, when this huge purgle uh. looks into this cockpit, it might see, it might zero in on the friend who desperately misses the boy that they flew off with. The purgle oh. actually helps them during this chase. Its undulating tentacles fold <coughs> down behind the T6, closing it off from view from Shin. And when Sabine finds an opening, it might have been more yeah. intentionally created by the purgle moving its tentacles out of the way. They end up parking the T6 in this grove of red trees, masking it as these red leaves match the T6's red paint. This setting, yeah. Reminds me of the mystic weirwood trees in A Song of Ice and Fire. It's just mm. a lot of interesting stuff going on here visually. Actually, its name, Cetos, like Arcana, clearly referencing the word arcane, Cetos must mean something as either the seat of power or maybe these ruins are kind of tossing themselves into the sea. Mm. While mm. these Stonehenge-inspired ruins are positioned by the sea, mm. it's just interesting to me that the true open gulf that this point jumps out into is up into the clouds with the whales and beyond that into the stars. Hu Yang identifies the Eye of Scion as a hyperspace ring. Yep. Smaller versions of these were used by Jedi starfighters like the one Obi-Wan piloted in Attack of the Clones to dock up with and then let the ring carry the hyperdrive. This mm. one has seven engines so that it can jump galaxies. I like how the yep. final shot of Sabine and Ahsoka frames them on either side yeah. of this ring, both in, of them equally it. propulsive to move this union forward. But That's Hu so Yang cool. has an interesting line here. The Jedi archives speak of intergalactic between galaxies, which used to follow the migration paths of star whales named Purgle. Jedi archives. The Jedi knew about other galaxies, and they knew about the Purgle as the link to them. Mm. In Rebel Season 4, Episode mm. 12, we meet a character named Minister Hayden outside the Lothal Jedi Temple, right before the World Between Worlds episode, and he discusses Jedi lore with the Emperor. The symbols and iconography are reminiscent of a report I discovered in the Jedi archives. The Mortis Gods. The Mortis Gods the in Jedi Mortis Archives. So gods. if these Mortis Gods are Star Wars Celestials, if they come from another galaxy, and if the Jedi Archives knew about that, this could all be connected through the Mortis Gods and the World Between Worlds, a dimension that transcends 
time. Look, folks, most of the trailer footage has been seen now. All that's really left that we have not seen in an episode is, are the duel between Ahsoka yeah, and Balin this, and this, this yeah. who wins on Cetos, and a duel between Shin and Sabine in the nearby trees. That's probably coming next episode since this episode ends with Balin mm -hmm. sending his forces into that forest. Trailers have also given us two shots of Thrawn, one from behind, one from in front. So think about that. Episodes five through eight could look like anything. Dave Filoni right. is directing episode five. So Dave. I think after Ahsoka and Balin's duel next episode, the wolves are gonna howl. The best way to support oh. this channel is by grabbing an Ahsoka-inspired Fulcrum shirt Ooh. available at nerdriot.shop. Please like subscribe that. to The Break Room for episodes of Wookie Leaks, our Ahsoka after show. And please subscribe to all three channels on the Neurox Stars Network. I want to thank Noah Chen and Jordan Morris for their help writing and researching this breakdown. You can follow me on all social platforms at EAVoss. Follow New Rock Stars. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Wow. Ooh. Lots of... Yeah, Details. lots, lots of stuff that I suspected. I actually did watch his video where he, he actually talks about how he used cryptographic techniques <clears throat> to translate all of those messages. It is very cool. You should watch yeah. that one. It is very, very neat. Um, I think he's right. I think next episode we see the the fight with Balin and Ahsoka, mm -hmm. and a fight with. Uh, T, or I guess that's her name, the apprentice, mm -hmm. and um, Sabine. That will be a fun um, episode. Yeah, yeah, and from there, it's anybody's guess. I'm betting the second half of Ahsoka takes place in the other galaxy. Yeah. Somehow, some way, they either get captured or they find a way on, they end up in the other galaxy, and that's going to be wild. Yeah. Wild. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be episode. so good. Yeah. Well, thank you again for tuning into our channel. Don't forget to give you love and support to New Rockstar. The link will be in our description below. Thank you for loving our show channel and liking our videos to get the algorithm going. Thank you for subscribing to our small, mighty channel to help us grow. Thank you again and see, see you in the, the next, next video. video.